One of regular expression's most widely used applications is search and replace. But it's a more powerful search and replace than you're used to thanks to this idea called capturing groups. So with a capturing group, you're able to say, here's part of my pattern, that whatever text matches this part of the pattern, I want to be able to use that in my replacement text when we go to replace. This gives us the ability to sanitize and reformat data much more flexibly than you can do without it. It turns out this is actually a very straightforward idea, so let's jump right into it with some examples you can follow along with. Let's explore capturing groups in the context of the file noisynumbers.txt. If you don't have this file yet that we used in previous videos, you can find some instructions in the description of this video on how to get it. This file is made up of mostly 10 digit numbers, but there are a few numbers that are fewer than 10 digits. So let's imagine that this is some data that we've recorded from end users who are giving us their phone numbers. And some people just mistyped and they didn't actually get all 10 digits in. So we've got two goals that we'd like to achieve with this file. First, we'd like to highlight the lines that have fewer than 10 digits in them. And second, we'd like to reformat the lines that have 10 digits to look a little bit more like a phone number and less just like a string of digits. So let's get some experience searching and replacing with regular expressions. So I'm gonna to go to edit and find and in VS Code, this pops up the find pane. And by clicking this arrow, I can open up the replace menu as well. The pattern we're searching for is going to be the start of a line and then any of our digit characters, so zero or one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine. And any of those characters can be repeated between one and nine times and then the end of line. Right? So this will match a line with between one and nine digits in it. If any of this pattern doesn't make sense to you, that's totally fine. I would encourage you to check out the earlier videos. There are three in this series so far. Links to those are also in the description below. This is pretty tedious to type out and we very commonly want to search for patterns that involve digits. So there's a shorthand, which is the backslash D. So we're saying match the start of line and then any digit, one to nine of those repeated, and then the end of line. So you can see that some of our shorter lines are matched here. This first line that's matched has only nine characters in it. The second one has eight. So now our task is to replace this and we wanna highlight the fact that these lines have errors in them. So maybe we wanna prefix this line with an error. And now the question becomes, well, if this is our pattern for searching, how do we replace this so that we get the text that was matched as a part of the replacement text? When you're searching and replacing with regular expressions, the regular expression engine sets up a special variable that you can access as part of your patterns in most languages with a dollar sign followed by the number of the automatic variable that was set up. And zero is a special variable that says, hey, whatever text was matched in the pattern across the entirety of the pattern, that's gonna be stored or captured into this variable zero. All right, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna set my cursor before the first match. And we see that when we uh, click the find and replace button, it takes us to the first match and I hit replace and we see that it's replaced with error followed by, and then notice that those were the digits that this pattern matched. Our replacement didn't know anything about these specific digits, but the regular expression engine set up this variable on our behalf that said whatever was matched in this pattern, we're going to capture that into a special variable named zero for you, and you can use that as part of your replacement text. Right? So we could demo that here where our text is 275, so on and so forth. And then I hit replace and we scroll up and we see that error 275, 155, and so on, right? So I could replace all like this and we see that uh, there are a number of errors in this file that it called out. So this is an example of using the variable that is set up automatically on your behalf that captures the entirety of the matched text. Our second task in this file is to try and reformat these numbers. So we could write a pattern that matches 10 digits, right? But now we've got this problem. If zero is a variable that matches all 10 digits, how can we use certain parts of those digits as part of our replacement text, right? What we'd ideally like this line to be is something like 445 and then 094-6264. We can't do this using the entirety of the text that was matched. So we need to break down our problem a little bit more concretely. So let's rewrite our pattern to match the specific parts that we care about. So the first three digits are gonna be one part, and then 
another three digits, and then four digits. Right? Notice that this pattern matches the same lines that 10 digits repeated did. We still don't have a, a way of using the first three digits as a part of our replacement. And this is where we introduce the idea of a capturing group. We can establish capturing groups by surrounding the parts of our pattern we would like to capture and be able to use specifically in our replacement text in parentheses, meaning we can use whatever text is matched inside of these parentheses as part of our replacement text. The only question is, how do we use them? Well, just like we saw with the zero numbered variable that says, take all of the text that was matched for this pattern, each time you establish a capturing group, a new numbered variable is set up that stores the contents of it or stores the captured contents of it. So the contents that are matched in the first three digits are going to be available to us in this special variable named one in our replacement text. The second capturing group two, the third three, and so on. Right? So let's try this out. So let's say we wanted to replace this with parentheses and then the first set of digits and then the second set of digits followed by a dash, and then the third set of digits. So notice that when I go to replace this now, those digits were reformatted using our replacement pattern. And the big idea here is that these parentheses can be used not only to specify the order of operations, but they also establish these capturing groups. It's a really beautiful double whammy that we get for free using the exact same syntax. So I could replace all of my file and notice how quickly and easily I was able to reformat this entire document in this particular way. Let's try out another example. If you open up the English words file, this is our dictionary file that contains a few hundred thousand words in it. I want you to try practicing search and replace using regular expressions by implementing a very naive pig Latin conversion. So imagine a word like hunky and we would like to convert hunky into pig Latin and our heuristic for Pig Latin is we're gonna take the suffix of the word or everything except the first character and put that first, so unky. And then you're going to take the very first letter, which was H, so H. And lastly, you're going to add on a Y at the end of it, right? So you're going to take the first letter of a word, put that after every letter that follows and then at the very end, add on a Y. So hunky in our very simplistic pig Latin implementation will be unky hey, right? So see if you can write a regular expression pattern that will convert every word in this English words file into pig Latin using this simplistic heuristic. Try pausing the video here and seeing if you can. How do we write a regular expression that will match these two groups we care about? Well, we can say that match the start of a line and then we're gonna set up a capturing group for our very first letter. So these parentheses establish that capturing group and this gives us the very first letter of any given line in capturing group one, right? Which we'll be able to use as part of our replacement. So how do we match the rest of a line? Well, we can start with a new capturing group and any character is going to be repeated between zero and an unknown number of times because our words are, are a varying length in this words file, right? And that will end our capturing group and the dollar symbol. So in this capturing group, we will be able to refer to it as the second variable that's set up for our replacement. And so now our replacement text is going to be the second capturing group's contents followed by the first capturing group's contents, followed by the letters A, Y. Let's try this out. Our pattern is the start of line, and then the first character of a line, and then any character repeated between zero and an unknown number of times, and then end of line. Our replacement text is the second capturing group's contents, followed by the first capturing group's contents, followed by A, Y. And I'm also going to tack on the original entire line that was matched so that we can see the word that was started out, that we started out with, as well as the replacement, All right? So I'm going to find hunky and we see that unky hay was the replacement and the original word was hunky, All right? If we do this for the rest of the file using the replace all button, it'll take a second, but we notice like the word cob became obke. So this isn't a great implementation of Pig Latin, but hopefully you get the point that you can use the captured group's values as part of your replaced text in any order that you'd like. 
The big idea of capturing groups is that it's parts of your input pattern. You can say, whatever text is matched here, I want to use that as part of my replacement. This is a technique that can help you sanitize and clean up your data by reformatting it with quite a bit of power and flexibility. Not only can you search and replace like this in a text editor, but you can also do it in a programming language as well, which we're gonna look at in an upcoming video. If capturing groups made sense, leave a thumbs up. Otherwise, if you have specific questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm Chris Jordan, and on this YouTube channel, I'm producing short, free courses on fundamental topics in computer science. I hope you'll consider subscribing to get notifications as new courses are published. For the next videos in this course on regular expressions, you can find links on the right. Happy coding, take care.